G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the GT World Series, the exhibition season number two for 2022 to 2023. I actually nearly said 2021 then, that's uh, a long time ago, but as you can see we're driving this machine today. It's the Porsche 917 Living Legend, which is essentially, it's essentially a concept race car uh, built to be the successor to the legendary Porsche 917K. But we're going to kick off this first race here. You can see it's pretty uh, depopulated. There's only six of us here, and this is because this was done in one of the earlier of the ten slots available on a Wednesday in the day of the week, which is the schedule for this Nations Cup, which is a little bit strange. We spoke about that in the last video, so I'll try and stray away from that conversation today. But I do have Tez to give me a run for my money here. But on the exit of this corner, check out that radar. Tez just spins out. Exit stage left. He drops down the very, well, I say drops down, he uh, descends uh, slightly because of the size of the grid and uh, that gap to Joshua's is now opening up beyond the one second barrier so he won't have any slipstream heading down this back straight but I suppose we'll use the rest of this first lap to talk about this car a little bit it's actually a very big handful to drive uh, pretty much because of the turbo and the huge power figure of 976 horsepower uh, it's actually got a flat 8 engine, which is a very strange engine configuration. Uh, but it does mean that this car is a, yeah, it's a bit of a handful. But once you get it right, once you get it dialed in, it's actually pretty satisfying. Uh, fourth gear exits on a lot of the corners and then the uh, elevation changes and undulations here at Trial Mountain today. Uh, that uh, also could, kind of contributes to the difficult nature of, the, of this car. But this first lap's been fairly successful. My one close opponent, I'll say, uh, is not in the picture anymore, and nobody else is catching up. Joshua's is hanging there, but that gap's still open to 1.2, and well, by the end of it, it was a fairly commanding victory of about 19 seconds at the end for a 25.46 total race time. Tez managed to get back up into second, which is good, uh, and all six of us managed to finish the race, which is good. Uh, so <laughs> I suppose nothing too much to complain about. Three-star result for the victory there. We'll take that, of course. The interesting thing about this slot, you may initially think, oh, six drivers, it's going to be no points, it's not going to be worth it. It turns out it was 275 points, mainly because I think Tez and I uh, were the main contributors to bump up that number, and then because there was such a low number of players, there wasn't anybody to bring down that average DR again because Des and I were A+, plus. I think there was a couple of other A+, plus as well. Um, so it ended up being 275 for the win. But I was talking in Atom's Discord server, of course, make sure you check the link in the description to join that one, and found out that a load of people are going to be joining one of the evening slots, which is this slot you're seeing. So Andrew and Ranger and Twitchy especially, myself and Tez again, as well as some other top split stable mates have joined this split. So we're going to go again, and uh, there was a significant number of points in the 300, 339 for the win in this one this time. So definitely worth going again, and we're going to go out for this qualifying session. We've let Andrew through, and I'm going to show you my whole qualifying session here. So for this first lap, let's crank up the volume and listen to that turbo flat 8 sync.
And this is normally the part of the video where I say I didn't get much practice in. And uh, once again, that's the case. I didn't get much practice in. So that first lap there is a 140.0, over a second off the pace. I'd like to be within half a second in a qualifying session of Andrew, um, but not quite the case here today. But let's see if we can tidy up this second lap here. So 140.0, uh, let's see what we can do. We had a better turn one, two, three, bit of oversteer out of that corner, because it's quite easy to get oversteer out of that corner because of the crest on the exit. Fourth gear exit as we drop down this little valley, and that first sector split is really good. Uh, Almost four tenths up on that time there, which will definitely plop us ahead of Ranger Oz at least, and definitely puts us towards that half second barrier. We've hit the inside of that corner there. Turn number eight out onto the back straight, and that's not going to be good because it's a decent run down this back straight. I don't have a figure for the length, but I would bet it's over a kilometre long. Uh, so definitely going to lose a bit of time here. We've got another sector split coming up on the exit of turn nine, which is this corner here. Try and get it to the inside, which we do. Get back on the power in fourth gear, and it's hard. It's so difficult to commit to the power and look at that we've lost half a second from that little mistake out onto the back straight That's how crucial it is and now we've got Tez behind us. He's catching up He's probably going to get a faster qualifying time here He's going to improve on this second lap as we wash wide through turn 12 or turn 13 actually And uh, that's not going to be good for the lap time either So this second lap actually hasn't been that great and we'll see uh, what it is as we head up towards the line trundle through this slow chicane Tez right behind us now he's had a stonker second lap so he's going to be uh, improving and he's only three tenths behind me so it was a question of whether he'd be able to get ahead Ooh, nice Tez who's still to go twitchy and he was. He was able to get up into second with just Twitchy left to finish that could potentially uh, try and uh, dethrone me from fourth. Dethrone me, he didn't. I managed to stay fourth, uh, which you can see right there. He did jump in right behind me though, and I was kind of sitting here thinking, I, I, I honestly wish he just qualified ahead of me because I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with uh, s starting ahead of a driver that's typically like half a second faster than me, at least per lap. Andrew started off pole position, but he got to set himself a bit of a challenge, drop to the back of the field and see if he can work his way back through. That's that is how OP Andrew is, and fair play and plus respect for that one. Uh, but let's start out this... Hey! Bit of a kick of oversteer as we start on this medium tyre. That's something we didn't discuss at all in that first race, is that there is actually a bit of strategy to play out here. The medium and the soft tyres are both mandatory in this race, which means we are required to do a pit stop. The lap on which you pit is not as clear cut and set in stone as you might expect. The tyre model, actually the tyre model chat has kind of disappeared. They first introduced this recent tyre model and what would happen is the tyre wear was basically the same until there was a cliff drop off right at the end where it was basically undrivable, which meant everybody was pitting on the same lap. But they've improved it now. Uh, you can kind of change the lap on your pit. You can sway it by a lap or so. So that's what we're going to do here today. That's what we're going to try and do. But I've decided to start on the medium tyre for this one because I wasn't up the front and what I was worried about is starting on the soft and then getting stuck behind Ranger and Tez who I expected to be a little bit faster than me in equal conditions so I didn't want to get stuck with them on the soft tyre and waste that soft tyre so I thought I'll go on the mediums just uh, just bide my time a little bit, just try and get a clean first stint in and then pit in later for the softs where I'm more likely to come out into a gap on the track and use that soft tyre to my advantage. So once again, another successful first lap, 1.8 sec or 1.1 seconds off the lead there and as we head to the end of lap 2, that gap is kind of the same. Tez leading the race nicely, Andrew... Oh, 
Oh, sorry. Andrew coming back through, and I let him go at turn 13 there. I actually ran a bit wide by accident because I expected him to go for the move at this corner, but he got it done one lap early, and that's Andrew back up into essentially the... In, into a perfect position to take back that lead as Cedars Brown rubs the barrier on the outside. He's actually overtaken Twitchy actually, so we haven't followed that action behind, but Twitchy back up into fifth, three tenths behind me. I'm still with Tez and Ranger Oz here as we head on to lap number four, or to the end of lap four. Andrew's driven away as expected, so we're not going to be contending for this victory here. A little bit of oversteer out of this corner here, but that's okay. Bit of a gap to Ranger Oz now. Sorry, Ranger. Oh, shit. Oh, no. What's this Cedars guy doing? Oh, my God. Truly shocking moment for this race. I've just... I've clowned that. I, I just caused a stupid little incident that affected both my... Me. Me. Twitchy and Cedars proud. And, and me, honestly. I, I was... Pretty, pretty well kicking myself for that. So much so, I was so distracted. Ended up running wide here. All four wheels onto the grass. Saw Toil gets through. I give myself dirty tyres, which means that as we head over the crest of this corner, oversteer to the left, back over to the right, and I'm just all over the place. And that half a lap there has... It, it's going to cost me several seconds because I'm still suffering the dirty tyres here. You can see the understeer we get through this corner. Hopefully it just about clears itself as we head out onto the back straight. Let's see, we kind of, yeah, well, look, we take that pretty slow. I think we've got the grip back there. But wow, what a shocking moment. I've, I've lost several seconds there and now I'm pretty well going to be kicking myself for the majority of this race now because I've gone and lost like five or six seconds there so I know that at the end of the race if I then lose a position by any more than that I know that I've just cost myself a position so honestly a bit of a theme is developing in my driving recently I'll make a crucial mistake early in the race and then I'll lament on the mistake when I see the end result and how many seconds I am off the position ahead of me and this is costing me points and it's actually becoming quite a big problem and one that I would really like to eradicate from my driving completely so I'm not sure if I'm being too harsh on myself with the mistakes that I make early in the race or if I'm just kind of I don't know putting too much pressure on myself or I don't know what it is it's probably not enough practice that's probably what it is but look we are gonna have to move on but this is the frustrating part is that I make a mistake I end up getting stuck behind someone that I never race because I'm always faster than them. And in this particular case, it's Saw Toil. I mean, again, this is a difficult conversation because I don't want Saw Toil to watch and think that I'm calling him slow. It's just a difference in, in skill level and ability here. And I, I just normally, naturally, I'm faster than Saw Toil. And now, unfortunately, I'm stuck behind him just bleeding lap time. Here's one I haven't said for a while. Hemorrhaging lap time. And that's something you don't want to do because we're stuck behind him here and what happens is that I don't get close enough on the exits of some of these corners because of the dirty air coming off the back of Sawtoil's car it means I don't have the perfect, I don't, I don't have all of the grip I could have which means I'm more likely to get a bit of oversteer as that turbo starts to kick in. But exiting out onto the main straight to start lap number 7, I just graze the barrier on the exit which means I fall behind Sawtoil. So, soy toil saw toil by about half a second but let's see what we can do let's work our way back up to the back of saw toil it gets a massive moment through the first three turns and that gap closes down to two tenths i was looking up the inside of turn four here but that's just not going to happen on this occasion especially with this very tricky exit over the crest make sure we don't run into the back of him here he has gone defensive which means it's going to compromise his exit we actually get on the power a bit too late in fourth gear and that turbo takes a while to spool up and kick in right under his rear wing heading through turn seven let's see if we can get a decent run through turn eight use that slipstream to our advantage and see what we can do exiting out onto the back straight we graze the barrier on the exit that's not ideal and that means we are not going to get the best of runs out of here three tenths behind perhaps in gt sport that would have been close enough but not in GT7, and it's not helped by the fact that these cars are just so excessively powerful that it's really hard to stop the guy ahead of you just driving into the distance because there's 970 horsepower working against the slipstream uh, 
the slipstream that's already weakened. But let's see what we can do right under his rear wing once, once again. I'm sensing a move into this final chicane. If we can get close enough through turn 13 here, and it's crucial. He runs wide. Twitchy tears into the pits on the medium tyre. We're going to go around one more time, try and get this move done. As we get a decent exit into turn 13, laid onto the brakes into turn 14. Let's see what we can do. We claim that apex, slide up the inside, and we've just got to cement this position by getting a decent exit out of the final turn. And that we do, as I think Sawtoil has exited in third gear there. It's faster to do it in fourth because you also avoid a gear change. Majority of the field have also pitted as we completed that move there, except for Andrew, who I suspect has probably started on the soft tyres given he uh, put the car on pole position. Uh, but now we're going to give ourselves a bit of an... What are we doing? We're doing an overcut here, staying out longer than everybody else ahead of us. So let's see what we can do. We do run a bit wide uh, through turn four here, but... Uh, we are just going to be focusing on trying to get the rest of the lap correct because it's absolutely imperative that we minimise our time loss through our in-lap here, which is going to be uh, this lap here, lap 8. So the pit entry is on the exit of turn 13 here. Move over to the left-hand side. The dotted line you can cross without getting a penalty and into the pits we go. Select the soft tyre as the pit stop boys get to work. He was on softs? Oh... What is he doing? And it's when we go into the pits that I see that Sawtoil the whole time was on an, a step softer compound. I was way faster than him on a step softer compound. And uh, it's just frustrating for me because I'm getting stuck behind someone that's just like so far off my pace that I shouldn't even have to worry about racing them. But. It is what it is. I've come out on my soft tyre now and bit of no man's land actually. 3.3 uh, seconds off Cedars Proud and I'm now 5 seconds ahead of Sawtoil. So I definitely just lost maybe another 4 5 seconds from being stuck behind Sawtoil. But anyway, we're ahead of him now. He's out of the picture. We're just going to have to focus on driving forward and maximising this second stint on the soft tyre here. Because honestly... I had a pretty disappointing first in. I had an incident at the chicane, I got dirty tyres, stuck behind a slow driver, and yeah, look, we're just going to have to try and put that in the back of our minds and get this second half of the race right. And we're going to start, uh, we're going to start by doing that, uh, by catching up to Cedars Proud and trying to get this move done as quick as possible. I don't want a repeat of, uh, I don't want a repeat of the Sawtoil incident. Actually, perhaps maybe that's why it was a bit difficult to get past Sawtoil, because he had a little bit of extra grip that I didn't have. But let's see what we can do with Cedars Proud. Send it down the inside at turn 14. Cedars Proud hangs it around the outside this time, which is going to give him the inside for turn 15, I think it is. And that's going to compromise his exit because he was slightly narrow, but we're pretty close here. So I'm going to do a gutsy move, duck into the slipstream and head up this gap here on the very inside. And he's going to hold me narrow, which is a decent defensive tactic there. So fair play to Cedars. He's going to break early and try and get a switch back on me. I nearly said switcheroo there, but I know how much Atom cringes whenever anyone says that. We get that move done through the first three turns. Pretty insane move, not going to lie, because honestly... Turn 1, 2, 3 at Trial Mountain is not the best overtaking opportunity because it's such a fast, undulating part of the track. It's just not nice to go offline through there because the risk of sending your car into the barrier is extremely high. Uh, but that is that move done for 5th, which left me with an 8 second gap just before this uh, change to the next scene here. But by the end, so this is the end of lap 14, second to last lap, big skip there because nothing happened. We just set some consistent 140s and you can see the fastest lap of the race are 140.0. So as you can see, once we actually get into a rhythm, get some clean air, we've actually got some pace in this combination. Uh, we've caught up to Tez though, struggling in this second stint. And maybe he was struggling with some tyre wear. He did pit in a lap earlier than me. Oh, look at that oversteer through turn three. Absolutely insane from Tez's car there. But let's see what we can do through this final lap. We've got one lap to go. We've caught up eight seconds in this second half of the race. So we're definitely faster than Tez at this stage. And I think we are on the same compound of tyre. Because I think I mentioned previously he pitted in off the mediums. Let's see what we can do. We have to make sure we're close through the exit of turn eight here. So it's crucial we get this corner right. We're probably a bit narrow and apex a bit early in fact. Because we don't get... Oh, actually, we got a decent exit there. That gap is coming down. With the assistance of the slipstream, perhaps we will get pretty close 
but I doubt we're going to be close enough to send an almighty dive bomb into the chicane. We are going to just have a slight movement there to hope that Tez looks behind. He does miss his breaking point, actually, so I think my movement just distracted him slightly if he was looking behind at that, and look at that right under his rear wing now. So we're going to try, have to try and craft something through the last couple of corners. Two overtaking opportunities left. One into this corner at the bottom of the dip, just on the compression here, but Tez gets a really good exit out of the corner prior. He doesn't get such a good uh, exit into that corner there, but with that little tiny bit of kicker oversteer that we get, we're no longer close enough to go into the chicane. We are going to just put our car slightly offline to once again try and distract him, but I think he's going to get enough momentum through that final chicane, and with a decent exit there, he is going to be able to hold that position there as we just graze the barrier and ruin our momentum. It is going to be a fifth, and with Tez right ahead of me and Ranger Oz right ahead of him, once again, I'm thinking, I think those mistakes cost me. Oh, Tez, good race at the end, eh? Oh, I'm disappointed about my first stint. This happened last week. Bloody hell. Got a really, like, mammoth drive earlier in the day, and then I couldn't replicate it when the points were high. Same thing happened at Daytona. It was pretty much a bit of deja vu, if anything, because... That Daytona race was a similar similar affair. It was, you know, pretty unpopular, uh, unpopular slots early in the day, which meant that I was able to kind of start off pole position and just put in absolutely killer drives without worrying about any traffic. And it was kind of a similar thing here. I did one of those slots early in the day, but then when all, all my mates were here, I, I wasn't able to do it. I just got stuck in that first stint. I think I was getting messed up by the drivers around me and I wasn't able to lap cleanly and consistently. But look, it's just going to have to be something I work on. There's no point me sitting here and just complaining about it because it doesn't make for good viewing. And I, I want to try and buck this trend that seems to be happening with me recently. I think I need to put some more practice in. Maybe that is going to be the focus uh, for the upcoming official season, which I think is going to be happening around March. But as for this second race here, 283 points. So that's what I'm talking about because uh, of the uh, low population. There's no one to bring down that points average in terms of their DR, which means that I'm able to put in a bit of a sloppy drive like that, way slower than what I was able to do in the first race of the video, and have a points premium. Uh, so it's a bit funny how this point system works, and there's definitely some optimizations that could be done, but obviously uh, they're sticking with this average DR thing for the, for the points in the lobby, which... I guess stick stick to your guns I suppose but <laughs> anyway that's going to wrap up this video so do hit the like button if you enjoyed do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me do leave a comment as well as questions comments and constructive criticism as always very much appreciated but that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me so once again I do thank you very much for watching see you later